Yo, what's up with y'all boys and girls, man? Hey, it's Jay Briggs here, continuing to cook up this NBA action, man. Y'all know we do here on the Jam Session. We cook up every single game, every single week. Last week of the regular season in the NFL, man. Y'all know what we trying to do, man. We trying to cook it up and smash it per usual. I appreciate each and every one of you boys and girls that tune in and watch this video. If you appreciate the content that I do, man, all I ask is that you smash that like button for me. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as I always say, man, if you're rocking with me, rock with me. I'm active on Twitter all day long. There's a link for that in the description below. And, of course, I have premium plays over at the site, including my NFL play of the day, which we did smash yesterday with the Houston Texans, man. Shout out them boys. Punch their ticket into the playoffs. Shout out to Miko Ryan. Shout out CJ Stroud. Shout out to City of Houston, man. Uh, Houston. We have a problem, man. Just trying to keep the momentum rolling forward, man. Week 18, um, not one of my favorite weeks, man. It's a lot of moving parts this week in the NFL, but you guys know the drill. I'm going to cook it up and try to smash it per usual, try to help you guys navigate your way through NFL Week 18. So without further ado, let's do exactly that. Let's make some money tonight, and let's hop right into tonight's NBA action. All right, fellas, let's do it, man. Last week of the regular season in the NFL, Hey, it's a lot of moving parts here. I'm personally going extremely light today. If I don't 100% love it, I'm not betting it. So this is going to be a quicker video. I'm going to just go through every single game, let you guys know my opinion, and uh, we'll live with the results in the end. So let's get her done. First game up, we got the Tampa Bay Bucks out on the road facing the Carolina Panthers. Panthers four-point home dogs in this one. Short, sweet, simple. Win and in for the Tampa Bay Bucks. They're going up against the worst team in the NFL. I am going to lean towards Tampa. Um, they've been a money-making machine this season, 10-6 and six against the number one of the better ATS teams in the NBA, Carolina, worst team in football, 2-14 um, and 14 straight up. I highly doubt they come in here and win this game. And then against the number, 4-10-2, and two, one of the worst in the league, if not the worst in the league. I can't trust Carolina. Would they love trying to play spoil here against their division opponent? Maybe, but... I don't think they have the pieces to necessarily do so. I think the Bucks are head and shoulders the better team, and I think they punch their ticket into the postseason. Might just use Bucks money line as a parlay piece, um, but it's Bucks or nothing for me here in our first game of the day. Let's keep it rolling. Next game up, we got the Cleveland Browns out on the road facing the Cincinnati Bengals. Bengals pretty sizable home favorites in this one, and I understand why. Cleveland, they're not playing anybody. They already locked up their playoff seating. Everybody's pretty much resting. And uh, the Bengals think they go out in their season on a high note, in their season with a winning record, and they will be back next year, man, when they got Joe Brr, Joe Shiesty back in the fold, man. Um, for as bad as the season was for Cincinnati, they're, they're going to end with a winning record. And I expect them to win this game fairly comfortably. This is a team that has a lot of pride. This is a team that has had a lot of success the past couple seasons, and I just believe their season this year was kind of derailed by injury. Um, you know, had a rough start to the season with the Joe Burrow injury, and then he, of course, missed significant time at the back end. They'll be back. The Cincinnati Bengals will be back. Hey, I like them tonight, though. I think they end their season on a high note. I think the Browns could care less about this football game. It's Cincinnati laying the points in Cincinnati here in their last and final game of the year. Next game up, man, we got the Minnesota Vikings out on the road facing the Detroit Lions. Lions laying three and a half here in this one. Interesting game. This is a really interesting game. I am going to give a small lean towards the Lions. Still kind of, you know, trying to establish some momentum rolling forward into next week. Um, this is a team that has kind of stumbled here recently. So I could see the Lions trying to establish and gain some momentum as they head into the postseason. Uh, Minnesota, they've been free falling, bro. They've lost four of their last five. And I don't even think they end their year on a, on a hot note. I just don't. I see... Um, the Lions, one of the best ATS teams in the NFL, getting another cover. I think they end their year on a hot note at the crib as well. Bounce back from uh, their loss last week to the Cowboys in disgusting fashion for Lions fans. I know they still talking about it. They still talking about it. <laughs> it is what it is. But bounce back week for the Lions at the crib. Stick a fork in the um, Minnesota Vikings. They'll be back with Kirko uh, next year. But let's keep it rolling. Next game up, man, we got the New York Jets out on the road facing the New England Patriots. Patriots on favorites, like two and a half here in this one. Hey, I'm on the Patriots in this one. I am on the Patriots in this one. Here's why. I believe today is the last game 
of the Bill Belichick era in New England. And with that being said, how storybook would it be to end this end his tenure in New England by blowing out the Jets? You know what I mean? Like that what has Bill Belichick done his entire career as the coach of the New England Patriots? Kick the crap out of the Jets. And I think that's exactly what he does today. The Jets head coaching staff and all that, they're coming back next year. They're getting Aaron Rodgers back next year. They had a built-in excuse um, the Jets this season. Hey, I just expect the Patriots to close out the Bill Belichick era in great fashion. I think they smash um, the Jets today. I'm laying the points with New England. Short, sweet, simple. Next game up, man, we got the Atlanta Falcons out on the road facing the New Orleans Saints. Saints can still, well, technically both two teams can still make the postseason. Um, they both need a win and a Tampa Bay loss. We already talked about Tampa Bay. They're not losing to Carolina. So this game right here, it's not going to mean much in the grand scheme of things. Um, I still think New Orleans probably comes out here and tries to win it. This is one of the games I was talking about in the intro. I'm just not overly in love with this game. I think this is a 50-50 game in all honesty. Maybe 60-40 because we're in New Orleans. But, you know, small lean towards the Saints. Maybe look at taking them money line in a parlay. But I'm not overly in love with this game. Um... I would say the Saints are slightly better right now. I haven't really liked what I've seen from Heineke or Ritter down the stretch. Um, yeah, small lean towards the Saints, but again, I wouldn't be surprised if this game got real ugly late because it's probably not going to mean anything with the Bucks probably going to be up huge on Carolina early in that game. So I'm just talking you guys through my thoughts. Again, not one of my favorite weeks this week. I'm just talking you guys through my thoughts. Um, so I'm going to lean towards New Orleans in that one. This game, we got the Jags laying five on the road on the Tennessee Titans. Jags need a win, man. Um, win, and I think they win the division. Um, lose, and they're out the postseason, I believe. Um, I'm on the Jags here. Am I rushing to lay five? No, I'm not. I'm not rushing to lay five with the Jags with how they've played down the stretch. But I do believe they're head and shoulders the better team in this matchup. And I do believe they try to establish some momentum heading forward into the postseason. The Titans, ugh, you know what I mean? The Titans, bro, they, I don't know what's up with the Titans. They need to reload is what it is. Uh, you know, the Derrick Henry just run the football down your throat era might be over in Tennessee. They are at home, uh, but it's Jacksonville for me here. Um, again, not overly in love with this game, but – I can see Jacksonville trying to establish some momentum heading forward into the postseason. I do believe they are the better team. Uh, give me Jacksonville in a small lean in that one. Let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. We got the Seattle Seahawks out on the road facing the Arizona Cardinals. Seahawks are not out of it, but they need some help. Uh, I believe they need either the Packers to lose. No, they need the Packers to lose. Seattle needs the Packers to lose today in order to get in, um, and they have to win uh, small lean towards Seattle in this one. Maybe just look at a money line. The Cardinals, shout out to Cardinals, man. Shout out to Cardinals for that win last week. Hey, love y'all boys for that win last week. Arizona, shout out K1. But, excuse me. Um, it's Seattle here, bro. Uh, I've been on Arizona a ton this season. And I wouldn't be surprised if they covered this game. But, I don't know. In a motivation spot for Seattle, I just see them winning this football game. In Arizona, I think it's in their best interest to get a high draft pick. Kyler Murray, he's going to be back next year. Um, Coach Gannon is going to be back next year. There's some pieces that I liked and saw from Arizona that I think they're going to be able to build on moving forward. Um, I think they really will prioritize a high draft pick. I just see Seattle winning this game and trying to keep their postseason alive. Um, so I'm going to lean towards Seattle. Maybe money line in a parlay piece, but again, this is an, another one of those games where the books know one team needs to get in to win. Um, the books know that we know that some of these teams need to win to get in. And, you know what I mean? I'm just not rushing to the window to bet those games is all I'm trying to explain to you guys. Small lean towards Seattle. Wouldn't be surprised though if the Cardinals find a way to cover the point spread, though. Hey, this next game I am very very much interested in. We got the Chicago Bears out on the road facing the Green Bay Packers. Packers laying three. We talked about Seattle last game. They need the Packers to lose this game in order to make the postseason. 
for Green Bay, it's simple. Win, and they're in. Um, at home, Lambeau Field against the team that they have just flat out owned. Um, we saw them beat up on them earlier this season. And quite honestly, in a win and get in situation, Green Bay, Chicago, I know Chicago has played really well down the stretch. But in the words of Aaron Rodgers, the Green Bay Packers, we own you. Um, it just is what it is. Uh, Jordan Love, I think, goes in here and gets it done. I really want the Packers to win this game, and I want the Rams to win. Yeah, and I want the Rams to win. If that happens, then the Green Bay comes to Dallas, and boy, I got some frustration to get out on Green Bay, man. Um, Dez caught it. Aaron Rodgers, Dak's rookie season on that sideline. Y'all don't understand the pain that Green Bay has endured on me in the postseason in my lifetime. There will be nothing better than to smash them boys in the postseason, bro. I will be the most excited person on the planet. So, I'm the biggest Green Bay fan today. I need these boys to win so it sets up them getting smashed in Jerry World next week. It's my story I'm sticking to. I'm just here to tell y'all my thoughts, man. Shout out the Bears. Um, you guys played extremely well down the stretch. Shout out you boys. And you guys might have saved your job. Eber Flus and Justin Fields, you guys might have saved your job. I don't know yet. We'll see. We got to see when the postseason comes around. I mean, not postseason, the offseason comes around. Bears management has some really tough, 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 tough decisions to make, and we'll see. For most of the season, I was telling you guys, Eber Flus is gone. Justin Fields is on his way to Atlanta. But the way these boys closed out this season, I don't know. Remember, the Bears have two high draft picks. They have their own, and they got the number one overall pick from Carolina, so... We'll see. They got some tough decisions to make, but in this one, Lambeau Field, win, get in, go, pack, go. So I can blow your doors off next week there in Big D. Um, let's keep it moving. We got the Chiefs and the Chargers. Chiefs not really playing anybody, sitting all their guys, hence why the Chargers are favored. But the Chargers favored by three and a half over the Chiefs. Even their backups to me is laughable. I want the points in my back pocket. Small lanes toward the Chiefs. Um, I can't lay points with Ian Stick. I can't do it. Won't do it. Don't even make sense. So short, sweet, simple. I'll lean towards the Chiefs. Um, even with their backups. I know this hasn't been the same Chiefs as years past, but I think this is a three-point game, however you slice it. I, I can make a real argument to the Chiefs still coming here and win this football game. Um, so if they're going to give me three and a hook in my back pocket, fading this terrible Chargers team, sign me up. Fading the Chargers. Next game up, man, we got the Raiders at the crib, laying three on the Broncos, Stidham and company. This is another game where I think it's a 50-50 game, and I and um, here's the thing, though. I think the Raiders actually come in here and play hard for Coach Pierce. Coach Pierce um, has really changed the culture in Las Vegas. They hated Josh McDaniel, and Coach Pierce has been a really good, fresh breath of air. Um, usually in this game, I would tell you guys I'd rather, in a 50-50 game, have the points in my back pocket or attack the plus money. That is usually what I would tell you guys, but that's not what I'm going to tell you guys today. I think the Raiders are playing for their coach, man. I really, really do. I, I believe the Raiders locker room wants Coach Pierce to be the long-term solution, even though he may not be. He may not be. It's the NFL. There's only 32 jobs, bro, and there's going to be some real sexy options out there this offseason. So we'll see if the Raiders retain him, but... Because I do believe it's up in the air, I do believe they come out here and play as hard as they can for them today and try to end the season on a high note. So with that being said, I kind of like the Raiders in a parlay piece money line, but I also do like them laying the three at the crib. Um, I was on the Broncos last week. Shout out the Broncos. Um, I think they had a high season, and I think they do have some pieces moving forward um, to probably have a much better season next year especially when they figure out this Russell Wilson crap. But today, last game of the season, I just want the home team in the motivation spot, actually playing for something, playing for their coach. Give me Vegas here in this one. Next game up, man, we got the Philadelphia Eagles out on the road facing the New York Giants. Giants, four-and-a-half-point dogs at the crib in this one. I have been the happiest man on earth to see the Eagles and their demise and how terrible they've been down the stretch. Like, there's been nobody happier than me. And there was nobody happier than me to see Arizona money line them boys last week. Here's the thing. The Eagles, they still made the Super Bowl last year. I still have told you guys 
for the majority of the season. I do believe they're the third best team in the NFC. Um, and with that being said, I see today as a bounce back spot on the road. They're just head and shoulders better than the Giants, and they have to establish some momentum heading forward into the playoffs, or they might get bounced week one, wild card round. I think they come in here locked in, loaded, and focused, and actually take this game seriously and kick the crap out of the Giants. As, or at least if I were the Eagles, that would be my approach. Because if they don't take that approach, they're in real trouble next week. At least I think so. So I think they need to come in here, try to make things, try to make the machine run well. Um, can they just play some football that looks good? Because they haven't looked good for five straight weeks, in my opinion. So can they come in here, get some great reps, and get out healthy, I think is the key here for Philadelphia. And if they come in here and do that, I do believe they win this game by like a touchdown. So I'm going to lean in the direction of Philly. Um, the Giants, this team here, man. <laughs> we made money on them kind of down the stretch, but I don't even know what their plan is moving forward, bro. Like, they got to address that offensive line. Are they Daniel Jones is probably going to be back. Um, I don't know. I don't know what's up with the Giants. I hope they stay a poverty franchise because uh, they're in my division. But <laughs> short, sweet, simple. I like Philly here. Uh, they need to come in here and get right. They need to come in here and get right. Um, we'll see if they do. And next game up, we got the Rams and the Niners. This is an interesting game. Both teams are sitting damn near everybody. Um, I do believe Puka Nakua getting some action so he could try to break the record. But for the most part, nobody's really playing here. But I think the backup quarterback matchup in this game is really, 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 really interesting. I'm taking the over today in this game between the Rams and the Niners. We're getting uh, Carson Wentz and Sam Darnold, two guys who I believe could have played significant minutes this season in the NFL with all the quarterbacks we've seen playing in the NFL this year. There was more quarterbacks that played in the NFL this year than any other year, um, and we saw a lot of bad quarterback play. At least we know these two guys right here, Wentz and Darnold, can play football. Like, they've been starting quarterbacks. They've played some meaningful football. Uh, Wentz, damn near, took the Eagles to the Super Bowl, and then Foles came and took his spot. Um, he was the MVP candidate for a while with Philly. Um, I know his career has been terrible since, but he can sling the rock. He can sling it. Um, I see some points from him. I just see back and forth scoring here in this game. I think – I just see that's how this game plays out. I think Sam Darnold can sling it a little bit as well. Um, so, big plays, quarterbacks trying to do something to get good tape out there. Um, I like the over. Small lean towards the Rams because I do believe they need to win this game uh, to try to improve seating. Um, but I'd rather play the over here in this one. I just think Darnold and Wentz try to come out here and put on a show. We'll see. Again, I told you, it's not my favorite week in the NFL. Like we're, These are not the teams we've seen all season long. So it's like we don't need to go balls to the wall, especially with the postseason coming up. We got NBA action today. That NBA Jam session is, is going to be up uh, around the same time as this. So ton of action today. No need to force it. I do lean towards the over here. Um, we'll see if it gets there. Next game up, man, we got my favorite team. The Dallas Cowboys were laying 13 points on the Commanders in a must-win game. My Cowboys must win this game. Reason we must win this game, we win it. We locked in the number two seed, meaning that um, in the playoffs, everybody would have to come to Dallas except for San Francisco, and that is huge. I do expect my Cowboys to come here, play hard, play tough, win this football game today. With that being said, I will not lay points with my Dallas Cowboys today. Reason being... A, I think this is Ron Rivera's last game as a Washington commander. Um, so I believe they probably try to go out on a high note for him. Uh, B, the commanders just always play the Cowboys stuff. They just always do. Always. They love playing spoil. They love it. The commanders love it. And I expect them to play extremely hard today. I think my Cowboys win in the end. And I wouldn't be surprised if we blew the living doors off the commanders. But I also wouldn't be surprised if it took like a game-winning field goal to win this game. I'm so serious. I am so serious. In all honesty, I believe the play in this game is Commanders plus 13. Am I going to bet Commanders plus 13 today? Probably not. You guys know I don't really like fading my teams. I hate how it makes me watch the game. Um, but I come on here and really try to give you guys winners and tell you where to put your money. And if I were to bet this game, it would 100% be 
beat on the Washington Commanders. I can't like 13 with my boys on the road. They've really been terrible on the road all season. They need to win the game. I 100% expect them to win the game. But to win it by two touchdowns, in my mind, it's kind of crazy. Um, give me the Commanders plus the 13. Again, not rushing to the window to bet that, though. Last game up. I am for sure betting this game tonight, man. This is a woo! It's one of them ones, man. It's like essentially a playoff game. Win and in, essentially. Uh, for the Dolphins, even if they lose, they're still in. Uh, but they win and they get, they win the division and get a home playoff game. Buffalo loses. I believe they're out. I believe Pittsburgh's in if Buffalo loses. So Buffalo playing for a lot here. Remember, I have a ticket of Buffalo to miss the playoffs. I got to go back and find it. Um, I'm probably post it on Twitter later, but I have a ticket for Buffalo to miss the playoffs. So this is a huge game for me. Short, sweet, simple. You guys know I'm on Miami. Um, I'm fading Buffalo. I've been fading Buffalo all season. I got to give them some credit, though. These boys played extremely great football down the stretch. They have turned. I didn't even think it was going to be this close. But they have fought their way back in it. Um, the Dolphins are banged up in this game. Bradley Chubb, we saw him um, go out last week. They got a few other injuries. But here's the thing. At least from a betting perspective. I think the Dolphins win the game, but from just a straight-up betting perspective, Laying three on the road with Buffalo seems insane. I think the Dolphins are the better team. So I'm getting the better team, home dog, motivation spot. Sign me up, man. I love fading Buffalo. I'm going to fade them one last time. I think that's their last game of the season. Come on, Dolphins. Let's get this done. Um, I'm on the Tua train. I'm on the Mostert train. I'm on the Tyreek Hill train. I'm on the Dolphins. Plus the three here in our last and final game. And that's going to conclude this episode of my NFL Jam Session. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you boys and girls that tune in and watch this video. If you appreciate the content that I do, man, all I ask is that you smash that like button for me. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as always, say, man, if you rocking with me, rock with me. I'm active on Twitter all day long, man. There's a link for that in the description below. And, of course, I have premium plays over at the site. Smashed our NFL and NBA play of the day yesterday. Looking to hit both today as well. You can scoop both plays up over at Pig Dogs Premium. You can hop on something long term. Um, and let's continue to make some money kicking the crap out of the NFL. I appreciate each and every one of you boys and girls that tune in and watch this video. It's been your guy, Jay Briggs, man. I'll see y'all soon. I'm out of here.